Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, November 25th. So today we have the moon in Leo all day. This should be a very welcome shift for the last couple of days, especially sitting in that watery moon in Cancer. Really didn't give us a chance to experience what this new Sag season is all about. Now that the moon is in Leo, a fire sign, and the sun is in Sag, a fire sign, we're going to get a little bit of a glimpse on what this fire energy should be all about. The moon in Leo, of course, is big, is bold, is a little bit extra, a little bit dramatic, definitely wants us to have fun, be a little bit more playful, and really just honor our heart space. So with the moon in Leo, we can expect a little bit of drama, especially in our mental planes. Uh, we just had Mercury again move into Sagittarius just yesterday. This is the first full day of Mercury being in Sag. So we're going to have to expect a little bit of a dramatic narrative take place. Right out of the gate, we have Venus making an aspect with the true node. This, of course, is going to highlight for us where it is that, you know what, we're still sorting through the information. We're still trying to get down our basic values. Venus being in Capricorn is really kind of trying to be realistic and detached from the emotions in order to get a good survey of the land in which we are currently walking, the territory that we just busted into. And the true note, of course, is trying to get us on the right track on where it is that we want to be, but where it is that we're currently at doesn't really support the kind of reality in which we are dreaming of. There are some elements that need to be let go of. And of course, we're still in eclipse season. So the universe has control of the wheel. Karma is definitely at play. And we're just sitting back trying to observe what it is that we can figure out for ourselves. What do we want? What do we need? Emotionally speaking, where are we lacking stability? Where are new values, new worth issues coming to the forefront? And of course, with every little bit of clarity, we have to rework our plans. The moon sits opposite Saturn. So the moon in Leo is very much about the individual, very much about my individual talents, what I want, what makes me happy. And Saturn is in Aquarius, which really wants us to think long term about how we can contribute what it is that we have individually to the bigger, greater, grander collective. But we're at odds with this because what it is that is being asked of us in social situations as far as the greater grander collective goes really kind of infringes on our own personal happiness. What makes us us? It's really kind of putting us at an emotional odds with our own selves because we don't know who or what to honor. Of course, there's an overwhelming want, need, and desire to honor ourselves, make ourselves happy, realizing that it all starts with us. Our vibration, our frequency, our individualness contributes to the greater, grander collective. But at the same time, Saturn, who is about roles and responsibilities and, and long-term commitments and foundations, needs us to think about what it is that we're choosing right now and how that's going to impact the greater, grander collective in the future. The moon trines Chiron. Now, this is a beautiful aspect because we're bold enough, we're brave enough, we're courageous enough, we're a little bit extra, we're all over the place, we are ready to cut cords with the past, especially the emotional baggage that we've struggled to put down and walk away from. Chiron, of course, is highlighting for us where it is that we have done enough healing to leave some of those bags in the past where they belong. And the moon in Leo right now doesn't want to look back, just wants to enjoy the present moment is what it is before looking towards the future. And we're going to get a little bit rattled here because the moon in Leo squares Uranus who is retrograde in Tauran energy. This Uranian energy likes to shock us, likes to awe us, likes to throw a wrench into our plans, really kind of mess things up for us. And this square is a tension point. It's a conflicting point. And right now, it's going to shake us up to try and create a little bit of chaos inside of us. Why? Because again, we're at odds with how do I honor myself individually? How do I make myself happy? How do I do what I want 
what I need to do, what makes me happy and still not feel like I am sacrificing those that I love. This Uranian energy is the higher octave of the intellect. And sometimes we need a little bit of confusion in order to get down to the nitty gritty of what it is that actually needs to happen. So Mercury, who is just fresh in this Sagittarian energy, comes up to, sits next to the south node of the moon. So oftentimes we talk about the true node, we talk about the north node trying to get us on the right path into the future. Not so often are we talking about the south node because the south node is rooted in the past. It is our old belief, it is our old actions, it is our old self, our old karma. And typically speaking, any time that we get caught up with the old, we get a little bit too nostalgic, a little bit too attached, a little bit too fearful of actually making the kind of changes and the moves that we need to make in order to align with the North Node, trying to pull us into the future. So let me just tell you, Mercury and Sagittarius, like we've discovered in the Astro event, if you haven't listened to that, please go check that out in November's Energy Forecast. But like we explored, it's a big picture energy. It's big thinking. It's a little bit extra thinking. It can get overwhelming. We tend to focus so greatly on the big picture that we lose sight of the details here in the present moment that are 100% important and necessary to work with in order to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we want to be. So we have a, a little bit of a, a problem here because emotionally we're chaotic. We just bumped into that Uranian energy. We're kind of all over the place. We're, we don't know what to think. We don't know what we want. We don't know how we feel. And then Mercury coming up to the south node, we're, we're stuck in the past. We're overthinking things. We're overstating our feelings. We are being overly dramatic and extra. We have the moon in Leo. We have the Sagittarian energy. We're overanalyzing everything. We're oversharing. We're just overly too much, too extra in our mental plane, in the words that we are allowing to leave our body without putting it through a filter. We're a little bit all over the place. And then the moon goes ahead and makes a very harmonious aspect with the true node that is attempting to get us back on the same page with our heart, with our head, with the plans that we have for the future. Sometimes we have to lose ourselves in the past. We have to get all caught up in those thoughts and those feelings to recognize, hmm, I don't want to live here anymore. I have to at least drag my ass back into this present moment. And maybe if I stand in this present moment long enough and I ground my energy out, I'll be brave enough to think about the future. The moon helps us out by bumping into Neptune, and this is going to give us an opportunity not only to sit in the present moment with our current thoughts and feelings, with our current emotional needs, and how it is that we're kind of contemplating in our inner realms, these new shifts, these new changes, these new ideas and perspectives, but the Neptune energy is going to strengthen our intuition to our higher self, give us a little bit more of a validation on what it is that's going on below the surface. Because again, the moon in Leo is very connected to the here and now, the egoic identity. Yes, we want to follow our heart space, but at the same time, we're basing it on our physical realms in the 3D in the here and now. Sometimes we have to be continuously checking in with our higher selves, with the intellect of the universe to say, hmm, am I on the right path or is, just this, my, is this just my ego tripping over something? And we're going to find out that we're actually in alignment with the good vibes, the good feels that our higher selves bringing in, mashing up with our current thoughts and feelings of our present moment in this physical 3D. The moon does make a little bit of a tough aspect with Venus, though. And again, you know, the moon in Leo, a little bit dramatic, a little bit extra. Venus is over there not having any of this drama, any of these emotions while she's in Capricorn. She's got her business hat on. There's no room for crying in business. And she just wants to kind of get a solution, get down to the nitty gritty. What do you actually want? What do you actually need? Where are you feeling emotionally unstable? Where are you feeling the disconnect in your personal relationships? Where are you lacking value, lacking worth within yourself? Where are you putting yourself in situations in relationship dynamics where you're not being treated of the value and of the worth that you think you should be treated based off of? Now, take a good look in the mirror because you've 
taught these people how to treat you. And if you don't have a certain level of respect and dignity and value and worth within yourself, you sure as hell aren't going to get it from someone else. So that's why we have to break things down and recognize that it all starts with us. The moon is going to go ahead and square Mars. And this is a tension point. This is a conflict. Mars, of course, is still in Scorpio, deeply passionate deeply intuitively aligned with what one wants what one needs and right now mars just wants to take action on making things happen but the moon in leo is hella confused very much just thinking about our own individual wants needs and desires and the moon right now with mars in this energy we could kind of act out projecting our insecurities projecting our realizations onto the world by taking a little bit of an action, overly dramatic action, mind you, and really make a mess of things. And here's the thing, we're doing this because we're at odds with ourselves. We are confused, mind, body, and soul. Mercury goes ahead and semi-squares Venus, wrapping up the day, which is making us super sensitive anyways, because literally it's our heart and our head kind of having this argument, trying to kind of fight it out. We're having two very different extreme points of view our head is trying to debate the pros and cons of our new thoughts our new perspective these new realizations that we're having our heart is really on opposite sides of the field again in Capricorn energy not likely letting too much emotion in wanting to stick with reality wanting to stick with the nitty-gritty of what needs to happen regardless of whether it hurts our feelings or not but we're 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 just divided and we're finding it difficult to figure out how it is that we actually think how it is we actually feel we're very disconnected in our heart space, therefore kind of creating that disconnect in our personal relationships. Many of us retract in order to figure ourselves out before we go ahead and share it with other people. And realistically speaking, we're just highly triggered. You know, somebody could say the nicest thing to us and we're going to be suspicious about it. What do you mean behind that? What did you mean by that? Are you being sarcastic? We are getting semi butt hurt over even the nicest things being said to us because we're paranoid. When we are unsure within ourselves, we are doubly unsure when anybody else is bringing something at us. So we are kind of riding this choppy wave, this up and down wave. Again, we're kind of halfway in this eclipse season. We're still releasing, we're still purging, we're still cleaning the slate, preparing space for the new stuff to arrive with the solar eclipse that's happening in the early days in December.